primary function of a pipeline is to safely, reliably, and efficiently transport energy products. I have about 500 miles of pipeline under my direct control. However, in the total U.S., there's like 2 million miles of, of buried transmission lines, and uh, that actually would circle the globe over 80 times. So pipelines are everywhere. They're in rural areas, they're in urban areas, and uh, we even have pipelines in the marsh. So uh, pretty much anywhere in the U.S., uh, you'll find a pipeline. Pipelines are used to transport uh, products such as uh, crude oil, natural gas, uh, propane, uh, liquid natural gas. These products are used in your house, they're used in uh, manufacturing, the gasoline you put in your car, and the diesel fuel, and the jet fuel, and things like that. They provide uh, a source of energy for your furnace, for your, uh, for your stoves. The electricity, believe it or not, that comes to your home, there's several power plants out there that, are, uh, that run on natural gas. Most pipelines, the majority of the pipelines, are below ground. Uh, depth of the pipeline varies. The pipeline right away is usually a designated uh, strip of land where when the pipeline was installed, uh, we, we, uh, we purchased the, the rights to lay the pipeline through that area. We try to keep it maintained so it doesn't look like uh, the rest of the area as far as uh, trees and, and uh, brush and all that growing up. Uh, we have uh, two pipelines in this right of way. One is a petroleum pipeline, one is a natural gas pipeline. We've got markers. One shows the pipeline marker with the petroleum. There is a one call number there and an emergency one call for our liquid control center. And on the gas side, that's the same thing. We have a control number for our gas control center. But certain companies have different markers. Some are round, like a, a, a baseball or pie. Some are square, but they all have the same information. They're at all road crossings, all railroad crossings, and uh, if we try to make sure that we can see from one marker to the next. Every piece of pipe, every piece of equipment has an inspection schedule, an inspection procedure. We make sure that equipment and those pipelines remain in good shape. We talked about the right-of-way. We actually either fly our line um, quite frequently or walk the line if it's a short line, uh, or even drive the line if it's a, a, an urban area implement smart pigs in a lot of the pipelines. Smart pigs are they're, they're, uh, electronic type uh, pieces of equipment we can put into the pipeline. They will look for any type of wall loss. Uh, so uh, in the steel pipeline, if you've got corrosion. Pipelines are, have a very, very good track record of, of safety and uh, I'll call it a lack of product release because there's a lot of engineering and effort that goes into assuring that they are intact, they're built properly, and they're maintained properly. Uh, I know that pipeline operators have various valving, they have pressure sensing, they have flow, t flow sensing uh, technology that's constantly being monitored. That in the event, the unlikely event of an incident, they can shut down very, very quickly. Yeah, the main function of the control center is 24-7 monitoring and controlling of the pipeline. So we're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And the controller is always focused on getting the product from point A to point B in the most safe and reliable manner. And so they're always monitoring flow rates, pressures. We also have various methods of leak detection, such as uh, overs and shorts, and also software programs that look at all the pressure transmitters along the pipeline and can also alert us if there's any abnormalities. We have a pop pipeline here that runs 15,000 barrels an hour, and most of us think in gallons. When we fuel our car, it's about 20 gallons a tank. So it's equivalent to about 30,000 vehicles an hour. No other mode of transportation can move that much product safe and reliable as pipelines. Like